inky stuff. That's what we're going to do. In Fusion, not Resolve, but it's possible in Resolve too if your computer is fast enough. So let's start with a text plus node. And we'll change the text to something like inky text. And let's make it a bit bigger. And after we've done that, we'll change the font to one of my favorites, Impact. Right, and once we're done there, let's go to the shading tab and set the color to something like dark blue, like so. And then change the softness uh, because we want to have a bit of a soft outline. So let's set it to three for both X and Y. Next one up, the erode dilate. And let's set it to something like 003. Right, makes it a bit bigger if we would display that like so. But we want to restrict it. So let's add a fast noise to the input to restrict the effect of the erode dilate node. So let's do that and let's tweak the settings a bit. So let's up the scale and let's make it discontinuous, up the contrast and lower the brightness a bit. And then we need, just need to set a seeth rate to ensure it moves around. So let's have a look. That looks pretty cool, right? But we want to restrict it now a bit by adding another erode and then go reverse and make it a negative. In this case, something like negative 00017. I tried these values before. Right, that makes it all a lot faster for this uh, tutorial. Now let's add a grid warp because we want the text to move around, to float in the water, so to speak. Um, so let's increase the grid size, right, to affect the text a bit more precisely. And then let's animate it. We don't need to change anything else, but just add it perturb for now. As you can see, quite a drastic effect. So let's go into the modifier and reduce that a bit by downing the X scale and the Y one to 0, 2 for both. And I've tried it before, the speed in this case, 0, 7, works really, really well. Then Ctrl P to override the grid warp for now. Makes it a bit faster. Now, so let's add a P emitter and then a P render. So we're working on a particle system and we're going to set it to 2D. Like so. And let's get rid of the transparency to see what we're doing. And now we just need to set the P emitter region to bitmap. And then we pipe the result from the Eero delayed into it. And as you can see, as it updates, it will now reflect the text. But we're going to change the P emitter. We're going to set the number to one because these are the particles that will control the overall movement. So let's set the lifespan to 80, put a bit of variance in there and let's play with the velocity a bit. We'll set to 0 0.03 and a variance of 0 0.002. And if we play it like this, it moves to the right. We want it to go up, so we change the angle to 90. And then we give it a bit of variance as, as well. So we set it to 15. And then we get this result. It may not be as visible on YouTube, but uh, it is the right result. Right, next one up. Let's add the turbulence. And let's set that to something like 0 0.02 and then a bit less for the Y0015 and let's switch this Z off or the Z depending on where you live. Now let's increase the strength over life a touch and then let's check the results and that looks pretty darn good. All right now we need to get ready for one of our most important notes we need to add in a P spawn to so contrast spacebar and add a P spawn and we're going to change the number to 30 and the lifespan to 60 and variance to something like 30. Now, when we display that, not an awful lot happens, but what happens when we change the variance of the position? Bang. This will ensure that the uh, particles will vary a bit as to where they get spawned. We need to change the velocity somewhat. And you see a little glitch here. Happens from time to time just restart the particle system. And that is looking pretty good. Now next one up, we need to change the color of the particle. So let's do that. Let's go into the style tab and change the color to black. And let's then also lower the alpha to something like, well, 0 0.3 to something around that. Now let's switch on the checkerboard to see what we're doing and let's change the style of the main particle emitter to black and alpha zero. We don't want to really see that. And again, we need to restart because it started glitching a bit and this is looking pretty good. But we're not quite there yet. So let's add the next one up, a blur node and let's set the blur size to two. 
and it's looking better and then the trails node in in this case we set again to 0 8 and let's have a look Oop, uh, I can see what's happening there I accidentally set the rotate there to 2 and that is looking pretty cool but not what we want so let's set it back to 0 and let's restart it and yeah I'm liking that that looks very inky now what we're going to do next is something different let's add another fast noise and we're going to display in here and let's set, set the first color to white and the alpha to one and the second color to another dark blue we're liking that bang like so let's go to the noise tab itself and let's change some of the details increase the detail to something like 10 discontinuous inverted well, maybe a bit less detail maybe five yeah something like that it's all right and we can change the contrast a bit lower it and then we alter the brightness and let's increase it to something like 0 0.45 or 6 even that looks good up the scale to 20 and when nearly there we just need to set the seeth rate and that is looking good and now we pipe the particle system into the effect mask so effectively the particles are, particles are masking out um, the overall fast noise so you get this result and it's looking good but we want to make it better by adding a filter and let's set the filter to Sobel or Sobel again I don't know how to pronounce that and that gives a nice little outline and let's then pipe the filter into the fast noise merge it onto itself in a way and show that and it's looking good but let's set the apply mode to multiply and let's lower the blend a touch something like that looking good we're getting there next up we want to add a bit of a color corrector so let's do that and let's lower the saturation a bit and then after that we are going to add a bit of gain something like that and a bit of a gamma All right you may think it doesn't look very inky yet but you'll see it in a moment All right we'll add a bit of soft glow as well lower the gain Load the glow size and I should actually display it as well let's do that there we go that's looking pretty good and now we're going to basically merge the particle system onto the original text or with the original text like so and let's add a little router there and then you get this right we just have a normal apply mode and you think okay that doesn't look very impressive yet but the next thing is we add in our footage and then we merge over our text onto the footage and we change and we show it first there's a nice fishbowl and we change that to multiply and now you start seeing what the sort of the end result will look like now uh, you can tweak an awful lot and first let's switch back on the grid warp with which we had switched off for performance purposes and that's looking good let's restart the trail and let's do a bit of a preview yeah, it's of course not very fast my computer is not very fast but I know this will result in a nice looking uh, movement because I tried it before of course now if we would want to change the color now we could also just add a color corrector here after the last merge and we color correct everything and we do that and then for instance we can you know, alter the gamma add a bit maybe a bit like so and maybe give it a bit of a different color a bit of green yeah let's let's do that and I think that looks pretty good so all we need to do then is to save it out now for this example I'm going to save it out on top of the footage so it all merged right you see the final result etc etc uh, however um, if you want to make it reusable just save out only the text and ensure you have um, a format with an alpha channel so that you can merge it with uh, different types of footage later on I realized I needed to add uh, for this particular footage a bit of a, a time speed effect because it's a bit too fast compared to the ink effect so like so render and thanks to the power of video editing no render time so there you go this is the result 
I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you've got any questions as per always um, you know leave a comment below and I uh, hope you guys have a great day take care bye bye